In a momentary calm, blades are sworn together, vowing to bring about the restoration of peace and order. The year is 190, and the Han Empire falters on the brink of destruction. Brought low by corrupt eunuchs, and strong-armed by the despot Dong Zhuo. The fires of war erupt across a once peaceful realm. In the growing chaos, rebellions rise, and the Emperor's voice is drowned out by the tyrant's roar. The land suffers. Yet though they band together against a common foe, such a fragile alliance cannot hold forever. Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Mega Sasuke, and welcome to our first ever Total War Three Kingdoms gameplay episode. Okay, guys, so we're going to get straight into this today. Today, we're going to be starting a brand new campaign as one of the uh, many warlords you can choose for the game. Um, if you guys do want to see more Total War Three Kingdoms content after today, please let me know, and I will continue to make more of these episodes. Um, but today, we're going to be playing as Sun Jan. We already have played as Cao Cao and Liu Bei, so the, only, the next step is to play as Sun Jan, as that makes the most sense if we're going in order of uh, warlords to play. Um, I will be making more videos about Total War Three Kingdoms in the future, including playing a game as Gon Sun Zan on Twitch, um, on my Twitch channel at uh, twitch.tv forward slash mega underscore sasuke888. I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to head over there and follow that. We'll be going through some Gon Sun Zan um, gameplay episodes there, but we never played Son Jam before, so we're going to jump in with him today. Um, again, if you guys do want to see this content, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys dislike it, please leave a dislike. Uh, it helps me gauge um, my audience's um, interest in videos that I make. Okay, cool. So we're gonna click on Sun Jen and we'll go from here. Okay, fantastic. So we've just gotten into the campaign now. So we're going to be playing um, as Sun Jian. As we can already see, we are at war with the Han Dynasty, the Han Empire. Um, and we have an enemy here blocking our path to um, retreating back to our homeland in Changsha. Now, for all of those who don't really know much about Three Kingdoms history or very much about Sun Jian in general, I'm going to be going through that as we move on with these gameplay episodes. Um, and if you guys do have any questions or uh, comments in regards to the actual history of this period, please feel free to let me know in the comment section. Um, that will help me um, in the future with my historical accuracy and also help the audience to figure out who's who and um, their roles within the period. But enough of that, we're going to get straight into it so we can see that enemies are encroaching. Sun Jian draws his blade. Okay, you have scored a great victory against the tyrant whilst the rest of the coalition languished. They were all but done now, yet your destiny is just beginning. There is a long way between you and your homeland and enemies bar the way. Cut them down. Okay, so we need to beat Quan Ro um, in order to push on back to our city of Changsha. The Jade Seal. So, while moving through the land, something draws you to an old well. You peer over the edge and see a faint glint from the bottom. As you pull the rope up, a familiar shape rises out of the darkness. It is a beautiful seal of jade. It is the seal of the Emperor. So you've received the Jade Seal, which is a legendary equipable item for one of your generals. Uh, it is revered throughout this period of time as a seal that all these warlords want to get their hands on, as it holds legitimacy and the power of the Emperor's will. Of Heaven's will, sorry. <laughs> so Sun Jian has obtained it during his conquest in the northern sectors over here in Liu, Liu Wang and Chang'an. Um, he picked it up on his return back, and now a bunch of warlords are jealous and they want it back for him. So it will be likely that we will see a bunch of generals going to war with us in the near future. Um, however, with that being said, though, we will move on with this battle. We'll actually just play this one. Um, 
Oh, okay, so it looks like it's going to be a decisive victory. That's okay, we'll still play. Have a look at all the units, compositions, and look at our generals. And, uh, be a good intro to this video. Okay, interesting quote there, but let's get on with the video. Okay, fantastic. So we do have Sun Jian here. It is raining, it is pouring down. A very grim day, rather. A really bad day for battle. No one likes fighting in the rain. Uh, <laughs> no one likes fighting in the rain, speaking from experience. But yes, um, we are playing as Sun Jian and his buddy here to his left, I believe, is Huang Gai. Huang Gai is a famous general within this period of time and he served the Sun family for a great many years as a well-known general. Uh, he's looking pretty good here. Um, a bit of the default color schemes going on here, but he has a unique set of armor I don't usually see on most generals. Um, so he'll be very useful for us in this early game. Um, and dueling other enemy generals as well. As we can see, we have to see a look at our unit compositions here. So we do have a couple of G militia infantry. Uh, these guys are really strong, comparable to, say, maybe the Ashigaru sp uh, spearmen, or Ashigaru back in uh, Total War Shogun 2. Um, they're useful for holding a front line and can pretty much hold anything um, face on um, but they're very squishy when it comes to uh, side and rear charges as well as arrows as well as they have no shield or no armor to protect them from missile ranged weapons now we're moving across we have the axe band infantry they have a shield so they have some sort of missile deflection chance however no armor so they can be easily they're very squishy to horses and other things like that um, their axes will probably cause a little bit more armor piercing and be a little bit stronger against other infantry units um, they're a bit they're a bit more of a um an aggressive assault infantry type. Moving on down, we still have more Axe Band infantry. And here we have one of the first units in the Sun family's army um, that is unique to the Sun family, the Mercenary Infantry Unit. As you can see, they are an Axe Band infantry unit. They do have rounded shields, a little bit stronger than the, um, the square shields from the Axe Band. Um, and they do have, um, as we can see, armor here, protecting them from some level of missile range. And they are less squishy compared to their uh, Axe Band counterparts, as we can see here. And moving on to the back, we have our final unit in the retinue in the army, uh, the archers, militias. Uh, they are, again, not very notable because they don't have very much armor to protect them from other missile units. Um, however, regardless, these guys will deal a lot of damage at range. Um, but yeah, we'll be using them a lot frequently, especially in the early game because they do cost not a lot to upkeep and they're really good at laying down a lot of damage on enemy positions. Okay, moving on, we'll have a look at our actual generals. So we had a look at Hong Gai before. We'll have a look at Sun Jian now, the famous Tiger of the South, Tiger of Jang Dong. Here he is in all his glory with his legendary steed. I forget what it's called. I think it is the Fire Steed. I can't quite remember. Um, but he this is one of the legendary horses in the game. Um, and you get him straight away as Sun Jian. As any other general, if you wanted to get this horse, you would have to defeat Sun Jian in battle and take his ancillary from him. Um, we'll get into that later on in these episodes, how to obtain ancillaries from other generals. Um, but yeah, that that's one of the mo one of the legendary horses in this game. Uh, he's unique armor to Sun Jian. He's got a lot of very attractive looking um, prints on his skin, including the tiger skin you can see here, highlighting his his name and uh, his kind of bronzy golden red. Uh, plated armor here but yeah and also he's got the silver sword which is a legendary sword as well only one of them in the game and only obtainable if you play as a Sun family or again if you have defeated Sun Jian in battle and taken his ancillaries but enough of that that's enough to army talk let's get straight into it this is going to be a simple combat design we're just going to push our units straight up um, and try to take on this enemy as we do overwhelm them. Our enemy does consist of a much smaller force of 2G militia units and 2 Arch militia units, as well as just a single general, Quan Ro. We're going to see if we can try to get into an engagement with Huang Gai, and we'll watch as that battle unfolds. Meanwhile, we can encircle and defeat the rest of the army, and we can watch the, the battle unfold between these two great generals. Okay, so let's get into it. We're moving our units up, pushing them as close as we possibly can. We might move them up a little bit further, and we'll see if we can get one guy into battle. 
Yep, he's challenged by Quan Ro. So we're going to accept that challenge and we're going to ride on fourth. And let's see if the initial charge, what that's going to look like here. Who's going to dehorse who? Huang Guy gets the first blow off immediately, starting the game uh, in his favor. And here we go. Bit of back and forth action here. We're going to see a lot of these combination moves. And honestly, these moves are what make this game so rewarding to play. Especially when you start upgrading these characters and getting involved in their personal um, storylines and their lives in general. This is what the Three Kingdoms Romance period was meant to be about. Two generals duking it out for superiority. Who is the stronger fighter and who will lead their victory um, for their faction. Who has the will of heaven on their side? Very dramatic, but that is the romance of the Three Kingdoms period. Very Games of thrones -y style. If anything, the original Games of Thrones um, was the period of the Three Kingdoms. Um, and that is something we shall explore further on uh, as we move on through the campaign and try to highlight some unique uh, storylines and unique characters that all gel together to make this really interesting plot and this really fascinating um, period in human history, really. Okay, push them up. We'll get Sun Jan in and on the action, fighting the G Militia. We'll engage the enemy as these guys do get out. As we can see, Huang Guy is throwing down. Pop one of his abilities. There we go. Give him an advantage. He's going to cut him down. It's clear whose battle this is in favor of. Huang Guy just seems to have better armor and just a better stats in general. He's also level 2 versus Quan Ro at level 1. Yeah, this battle's already been decided, but it is still interesting to see these fights nonetheless. And sometimes you will see that these generals that do have an advantage end up losing for other, due to various other factors. We see we're just rushing in straight in there. Gonna cut these units down. Run straight into the G Militia and try to get as much damage off as possible. Again, G Militia are very, very, very strong at holding a line. So we're gonna flank around them. Hopefully get some, some nice flanked attacks on the enemy. Basically encircling them now at this point, we do have the numerical advantage and the um, unit quality advantage with those mercenary axe band. But as we can see, this is about to be the end of the fight. We'll watch this as this unfolds. Sun Jian is in on the action. He's going to pop his ability. Well, Hong Gai is going to keep fighting and we will see who wins this. Couple of quick strikes there. Oh, another animation strike. Good dodge. He's going to finish off. What is this finisher going to be? We will find out. Oh, straight to the face. Spear to the head. And that is that. Victory is his. Hong Guy has been defeated? Oh, uh, wait. I think that was a glitch. I'm pretty sure Hong Guy survived that. <laughs> okay, cool. Fantastic. And we have a unit that's broken, but is still fighting. Very interesting. Maybe this game is a little bit buggy at this stage, because it says it is broken and routing. However, they are still in the fray. There we go, now they're broken. And that was a quick, easy victory for us. That was a good kind of taste into this period and into this battle. Gets us going at the start of our campaign and boosts our confidence when we move on to take the settlement. Conro. Okay, that was a good defeat there. Nice, easy victory for us to start the campaign off. Hopefully, the town settlement will be just as easy to conquer. Um, but we will see in this next upcoming battle. We can ransom, get military supplies, or we can replenish our units. I think we might just get the income, because currently we do have 60 out of 100 supplies, and we're so close to our home territory. I don't think it's necessary to just get 8 military supplies. So we're just going to ransom the units there. Try to get as much money out of that as possible for the early game. And now we're going to push on to take the settlement. Okay, Sun Jian rides home, but threats persist. The Southlands must be secured to that end, and the nearby region must be brought under your control. Yet at the same time, be wary of Liu Biao nearby in this time of strife. Any sign of weakness could be pounced upon by awaiting warlords. Okay, fantastic, glorious victory. This victory is the first of many. It will prove 
I will prove my worth as everyone else falters. The coalition cannot stop the chaos, but I will show them that I can. Sun Jian, the tiger of the south with a super strong conviction and reason to keep fighting. <laughs> okay, so let's take this town and try to move on to get back to home. To home in the southlands. Alrighty, so... Okay, so we're going to see a bit more casualties here. Um, we could probably starve them out, or we can demand surrender. I think we might do that at first, because we don't want to waste our unit replenishment right now. We'll demand surrender, and oh, look at that, they actually surrendered. So that makes it easy for us, we don't have to fight a unnecessary battle. Um, and we're just going to occupy this to give us more faction support and more military supplies. And we'll also leave the buildings intact for that. There we go, support from the people, mission success. Fantastic. Sun Jian builds a future in the south. Your economy grows. Construct or upgrade a building in Changsha. Okay, we're going to do that now. So we can get that extra buff bonus. So Changsha, we're going to upgrade to a... I think we might go land development. Or we'll go drifter farming camp. Hmm. Tempting, tempting, tempting. We're going to need as much... Um, well, we have armor and we have tea house in the settlement we're eventually going to get. So we might actually not go for food. We might actually go for state workshops instead. That'll give us a bit more income from our industry. Um, and we'll be able to utilize that in the future a little bit more. Um, we can also upgrade Jangling and try to upgrade something here that will give us a bonus to our... Let's see what we can get here. So we can upgrade the settlement to a large town, upgrade the dock to a pier. We can upgrade to a land registry office as well. A jetty to a pier, sorry. Um, we are on three food, which is not enough to fund the army. We actually might upgrade the land registry offices, office. But before we do that, I think we do need to upgrade to a large town just for that extra garrison defense bonus and a bit more income from our peasantry class there. So we'll do that now. And that pretty much concludes our first set of turns. I might end the turn on that one and we'll move on to the next one. Okay, fantastic. Here we are with our next turn. So before we left the previous turn, we had just conquered Jiangling. And now we're going to be moving back to take out Changsha Trade Port and try to secure the surrounding areas of Changsha. We will need to take out the Armor Craftsman and the Tea House. Not take out, sorry. Reconquer the uh, Armor Craftsman and the Tea House. So that'll give us a nice bonus at the start and boost our economy um, for when we eventually, I'm pretty sure in the history, go to war with Liu Biao. Um, Actually, by the history, I'm pretty sure Sun Jian dies on his return across the Yangtze River, trying to get back to Changsha. Um, he gets ambushed on the way by a hailstorm of arrows and an army waiting on the shore. But that won't happen this time, as we will keep Sun Jian, the Tiger General, alive in his retreat back to the Southland. And we will reconquer China and unite him under the Sun family banner. <laughs> <laughs> deviating from history quite a bit there but we will do that because we have the will of heaven on our side <laughs> okay so let's do some recruiting actually while we're here um, it might take a couple of turns to get these guys but we might as well start doing it now um, as that will give us the necessary manpower we need to hold our own against the enemy G militia not as strong as spear guns but they're a bit more all rounder and they cost a lot less. So we're going to get two spear guard units and a couple more militia units. And that'll be enough for this army. We might end up getting a commander. Oh, I don't think we can. <sighs> Difficult business. We don't have... There's no um, strategist that likes Sun Jian or, at all. Either of them don't. Um, so we can't get the strategist archers. That'll be fine. We only just need a retinue of two for now. And uh, eventually we'll get another army to help us conquer the Southland. Um, which we actually might do now. We might just grab him now because we will need to uh, conquer the Southland. We might just keep Sun Jian, um, make him take Changsha. Or we might just garrison him in Jiangling and use him to fend off Liu Biao's invasion. Which I'm assuming is going to be coming soon since we have the Imperial Jade Seal. And it follows the storyline of Three Kingdoms. Okay, who can we, who can we get? We might get Cheng Pu. Oh no, we might get Lady Wu. Cheng Pu is an important character within the Three Kings period. So is Lu Su, actually, as a matter of fact. Uh, so we might get Cheng Pu. And we'll get him to start building a force. 
These guys don't like Chengpu either, so we can like use them. Uh, Chengpu, we'll start getting him to recruit more units. These guys cost a lot per turn. We'll just get some Saber Militia just to keep it cheap for now. Um, and he can just build a garrison force here. We might move around and conquer these surrounding territories while we build our strength in Jiangling and try to hold off Liu Biao's invasion. So he wants a non-aggression pact. However, we will pay him $31, a recurring fee of 183 for 10 turns. We'll be paying him food for 10 turns and we'll be giving him the builder, the builder and the feather fan. Small price to pay for salvation, as the almighty purple grimace would say. <laughs> but unfortunately, we didn't want to accept this because we know um, in the storyline that he may backstab us. Uh, there's no point selling all of our goods to him, as we do need to build a power base before we can engage in any sort of diplomacy. Okay, fantastic. So Jan builds a future in the south. Construct an upgrade, a building in Changsha Town. Okay, we've done that. So we got the support of the people. Growing might. So we need to hold 23. Total of 23 units. Okay, very good, very good. We're going to do that. But first, we're going to focus on building up our strength. As we are going to need that income from our peasantry and from our settlements. Uh, to further increase our army size and whilst we do that three more turns we'll have full replenishment and we'll be able to start recapturing some of our lost territory okay fantastic so we might get Sun Jian to sail to the southland now and take out the Changsha trade port here we go Get him on the river already. We can leave Jangling for now. No one's at war with us just yet. Once we equip the Imperial Jade Seal and take Changsha Trade Port, we'll be able to push all the way back up to Jangling and just hold there for now. But while we're waiting, we can also look at our character details. So we can see here, as I was saying before, we have the Silver Sword, the Sun Jian Special Armor, and his Heavenly Fire. Okay, I thought it was a Fire Steed. It's called the Heavenly Fire. Um, this is one of the legendary lore, um, horses in the game. So we have the Heavenly Fire. I think we have a couple more. We have Red Hair. Um, we have Sao Sao's Horse. I forget what that one's called. And we also have Liu Bei's Horse as well. It's a white horse. Um, but I forget what they're called, but yeah, this is one of the legendary horses in the game, only unique to certain faction leaders, you can only obtain once you've defeated them, or if you play as them. Okay, so here's the Jade Seal, we'll equip this, because this will give us plus 8 satisfaction, and 6 morale when defending, plus 25 prestige, and a 10 authority, this will boost our stats quite significantly, so we will equip that. Uh, we also have these two here, Jade Sculptor and the Builder, we'll equip the Jade Sculpture, Sculptor, as it will give us a uh, plus 10% income from commerce, 6 cunning and 6 expertise, which is a good thing for us, as we do need as much buffs as possible for our main faction leader. Okay, our relations, so we don't get along with Lubu at all, we're rivals with Lubu. Enemies of Dongzhou, of course, and all of his generals, acquaintances, Liu Ju, and Yuan Xiao, admires zeal. Okay, very cool, awesome. Hate Liu Biao, hate Zhu Rong, very cool. <laughs> okay, so let's have a look at our tech tree. Okay, so this is a cool feature of the Three Kingdoms game. Um, there are a bunch of different branches you can go down, each giving the unique buffs and perks to your faction. Down here's peasantry, military, uh, administration, and just general admin stuff. Then you've got uh, your industrial stuff here, and then your trade as well here. Okay, since we are going to be a very heavy commercial, uh, industrial-based faction, we're going to need to upgrade all of our stuff in that regard. We might end up going for the uh, government enterprise. We might, we're not going up to the industrial, sorry, <laughs> the industrial branch of technologies. So we might either get the pottery bricks, 25% building upkeep, uh, plus 10% commerce from industry. What else does that give us? Industrial Tool Depot, Artisan Tool Depot, or our Mercantile. We can get the Artisan's Workshop or the Mercenary Barracks. Oh, that'd be good. Captain Retinues provides Mercenary Captain Recruitment Charges. Okay, for 12% Replenishment, 40%. That's interesting. That must be a unique building, maybe, to, to Sun Jian. I've never seen that before. 
Um, but we will get the 10% commerce to industry or the 15% income from commerce. We might end up just getting this, the mercantile regulation. That'll give us a nice buff to our commercial prowess. And 20% com income from commerce. That might be the next one we might get. That'll give us some nice perks there. We can eventually get this, the Silk Road Expeditions, giving us the Onyx Dragons, which are a very unique, very expensive um, unit of a soldier. But yeah, we'll see where we go with that. We're going to try and move up the industrial chain, as I do believe that will give us the best um, bang for our buck, essentially. So we'll move down south. We'll take Changsha Trayport with Sun Jian. We'll move Chengpu. Uh, we might give him another retinue of someone. Lu Fun. He seems to be a friendly uh, general to him. So we might just get Lu Fun to join. He's going to cost a little bit per turn, but that gives us a little bit more flexibility in the military, not just all hand-to-hand. -hand. We'll get some actual archers on the field as well with this. Okay, and that'll be enough for his retinue. I think that's enough to conquer these two places down here. Um, we might end up going for the toolmaker and moving our way across as well, if we can. Um, my strategy for this gameplay is basically just go around, conquer as much settlement as, settlements blah, as possible, and then just consolidate and move out from there. Sun Jian's gameplay style is um, heroism, so the more we conquer, the heroism bar goes further and further up. Um, that's just hit the way he plays. Conquest of the Southland is his special um, strategy for his particular faction. Um, and we will continue to conquer and conquer. So, honestly, he's probably one of the more um, new player-friendly faction leaders to play, as his main strategy focuses around conquering nearby settlements to increase his heroism, which increases productivity and satisfaction um, over time. So, I'd say he's probably one of the easier generals to play at the start. I'm not saying that he is. He does have a difficult location, as he does go to war straight away, pretty much, with Liu Biao. Every campaign that I've played, I've seen Sun Jian fight Liu Biao. Um, and there's neighboring vassals as well. But every single gameplay that I've played as well, Sun Jian has conquered most of the entirety of the Southlands and is a huge rival faction to verse, coming to the late game as you try to conquer and unite China. Okay, very cool. So we are going to end our turn on that and see what the next turn brings. Again, guys, if you do like these episodes and you want to see me explain more about my strategies and tactics, please head over to my twitch.tv forward slash mega underscore Sasuke888. I will be doing a Gonswin Zan episode as I haven't played as him yet. Um, that'll be coming out in the coming weeks. Uh, again, if you guys do like this Sun Jian content, let me know in the comments down below and I will make more of these episodes. Um, we're probably going to go for a 10 turn gameplay with this. We have currently hit turn five so five more turns to go and we'll end it on there and then we'll continue it on in our 10 turn episode blocks okay so Jan calls warriors to his sides growing might so we've hit the uh 26 mark out of the 23 we meant it for the um increase in bonus experience per season and the 10 percent replenishment faction wide for my military forces so that's good we've got that that'll help us in the conquest of the south this future awaits so Sun Jian prepares South of the Yangtze lies vast fertile territory for the taking. Oh, my heroism increases. So hold three settlements. We currently have two. Okay, so we need one more to get this um, plus five heroism. Okay. Very cool, very cool. All right, let's go to Changsha. Let's start moving Chengpu to the border. We might go for the tea house first. Is that one, two, three? Or one, two? Or we might actually just go for the... We'll replenish here, make an encampment here. We might just go straight for the armor craftsman and then work our way to tea house, then tool maker, and then we'll see where we go from there. That'll be a nice buff to us. Sun Jian is in striking distance now of Changsha. We're going to demand them to surrender. There's no point in wasting military supplies and military units, especially in the early game. It's better to just conquer a settlement without wasting any resources. So we're going to demand surrender. And they have their surrendered there. <laughs> Thank God for that. We're just going to occupy that. Taking a key position within the Southlands. The trade port will be a huge buff to our income per turn. And we're going to try to upgrade that as soon as we possibly can. Uh, heroism increases. Very good. Okay, so we get that replenishment 
per turn. That's going to be good. As we can see, Changsha is going to be Changsha Trayport is going to give us a huge buff. We can assign assignment now. Come from commerce. Silk and Spice, yep, we'll equip Lu Su, we'll make him stimulate the markets in Changsha, and that will give us a nice buff to our income per turn. Okay, fantastic. So these guys are almost ready to step off. We have about three turns left. We might just wait one more turn and then we'll push off. We don't need too many archers in the retinue, we just need them to provide a little bit extra support to the infantry there. We'll move on to the next turn and see what we can do with this. Okay, from each according to ability, your heroism increases, and any character on the assignment. Very cool. Ooh, reach faction, rank second marquee, your heroism increases. So I need to reach the marquee status to get more heroism, which is going to be a buff to us. Path of Glory, destroy the following factions, Huangzhu, Sai Mao. So these guys up here, Sai Mao, Huangzhu, which is what we'll do soon. I'm thinking we um, start mobilizing Sun Jian up to Jiangling. Or we could start conquering the fishing port or the iron mine. I think we're going to probably gun for these two because they do provide a huge buff to our income. The Imperial Seal. So you will spy a large force flying at the banner of Liu Bia as you draw closer. A rider meets you. My master, Liu Bia, has heard that you hold the Imperial Seal. You must return it to the Emperor at once or face war for your thievery. Once one of your generals tells you of Yuan Shu, one who would be willing to aid you should you keep the seal. Give the seal. And so we lost Imperial Jade Seal. Plus 80 with Libya. Keep the seal. Follow the storyline. May be seen as an act of treachery. War declared between Sun Qian and Liu Bia. Diplomatic relations plus 80 with Yuan Shu. Okay, so we're going to keep the seal. <laughs> I don't think it's a wise decision to give away such a legendary ancillary, especially to Liu Biao, um, who is already at the start of the game an enemy of the state. So we will have to mobilize Sun Jian back to Jiangling and try to recruit more units to defend the northern sector of the army. Oh, sorry, of the front line. We will keep the seal and we will try to get Yuan Shu to join us in the war against Liu Biao. There we go, so we are at war now, ladies and gentlemen. We have started our first war against a major faction. This is going to be a very difficult slog, and it's not going to give us time to breathe. Um, but that's okay, we have already an army in the south that can conquer some of these lower tier Han Empire settlements, and that will boost our military focus in Jiangling. Okay, so we're going to be doing that right now. So Sun Jian at war with Liu Biao and his two vassals, that's okay, that follows the story and we will be able to get on with that pretty much immediately if we can cross the river and get back to uh, Jiang Ling. We will move back up the river though because that is the quickest way to get around this place. Uh, it'll take two, three turns to get back to Jiang Ling. Two more turns after this turn and we will be ready to move our conquest onto the two vassal states of Liu Biao. Now we can engage in diplomacy as we do need support from Yuan Shu and we will require his assistance in taking out Liu Biao. We will request a non-aggression pack. We will request military access as he is on friendly terms with us. Uh, we could start a coalition, maybe. Support his legitimacy if he wished. We might just give him money though. There we go. So he's on good terms with us. He might mobilize soon to attack Liu Biao, as he has his eyes set on the rich, uh, rich lands of Liu Biao's territory, as there are jade mines and other stuff over there as well. Um, so they will probably go to war soon. Meanwhile, we have Sun Jian mobilizing. We can move Cheng Pu down to take on Cheng Sha. Uh, we'll start mobilizing him now. As we said, we're only going to wait one turn before we decide to move on the armor craftsmen. We're going to need to take this settlement as soon as we possibly can. It is a bit defended, so we may have to recruit another general. We can't at this stage. We might just have to um, just have to fight a hard battle there. We will see if it is viable. If not, we will retreat and try to take out the tea house. Okay, so we're a bit of a, a shaky start. We do need to mobilize here to defend our northern front and probably move on Sai Mao and Hangzhou as quickly as possible. Um, that'll be our main priority in terms of military strength. 
You acknowledge legitimacy? I can't at this stage, you mentioned. I'm afraid I have other matters that require my attention. We do need to focus on these two enemies here first. Oh, so they're going to engage with me first. Okay, so they've moved up. They've pushed up the two retinues of the Han to take on Cheng Pu. We do have a close victory advisory prediction, but we're going to have high casualties in the process. We might have to fight this battle as we it is going to be a decisive battle. We make a quick save. We're going to start this battle, ladies and gentlemen. I think we do need to win this. This is going to be the, the pinnacle battle between us conquering the um was it the armor craftsman yeah this is this will be the decisive battle for the armor craftsman <laughs> let's try to look for the words there so we're going to fight this battle and see if we can win um with less casualties they do have horse units which is going to be difficult for our units to hang on to um to hold them down with but if we can get the axe infantry um on them hopefully we can whittle them down or if we just get our archers to zone out their archers first and then we'll zone out their cavalry um, but it's going to be a difficult battle nonetheless. They are attacking, so we do they are attacking, so we do have an advantage, so we can use the hills. Um, we're probably going to do that. The hill to our advantage, which will slow down their horse charges and give us time to maneuver our units. So we will do that. We'll hide them in cover here. We'll try to get off a sort of a mini ambush type thing. Get them to focus all their maybe put the, push them even further back in here. And then we can reposition up in here. We do have archer units that are exposed. This one apparently isn't in cover. Which is strange. But this will give us the cover we need from their archers. And their horses will find it harder and harder to push through these bamboo areas. And find it more difficult to uh, get flanks off, etc. Okay, fantastic. So we will set our battle lines up. I want to get my axe infantry on the far left flank. So we will do that. And we'll get them down here. We're just going to hug the tree line, I think, is what's going to be best for this game. Um, we'll try to use the axe to, to scare off any kind of uh, horse unit trying to flank. We'll get our swordsmen up on the front line, try to get them to take on the G militia and try to get some flank around them, some flanks around them. And the archers will just have to stand back and try to provide as much fire support on enemy units. Hopefully enemy archers, as well as those horses. If we can whittle down those horses, I think we have a strong chance of winning. Alternatively, we could just zone out the horses with the archers, which I think will be what we'll do. Um, just to get rid of them as quickly as possible. As that will limit our our, our need to worry for the horse, flank, horse units flanking and attacking my sides and rear. Since we don't have any spear units. Okay, cool. So we'll move up. That was a long explanation of what I'm doing. <laughs> so we'll move our units up. We'll get Chinkpu into the center. We'll try to see if we can get him in a duel. I'm not sure how well he'll go as a sentinel unit, but we will do our best. I'll try to lure the enemy up here. So if we can't get Zhu Yun to go into a combat, into a duel with my Chinkpu, they have similar strengths. Okay. We might actually engage one of these guys in combat we'll lure them out with Cheng Pu try to get them to come up here and we'll collapse on them from there sort of a mini ambush type thing they can see one of our axe band infantry so they might be going for the, the long flank that's okay um, we can also just give them some cover I think we might just conceal them a little bit So I just want them to focus completely and solely on Cheng Pu. Hopefully that will make them go into cover. Hopefully, maybe not. Maybe there's not enough cover there. Hopefully there's cover here. There we go, they're in cover now. <laughs> so Cheng Pu standing by himself, ready to zone out the enemy. Him and his gray horse and his sword his one-handed sword we will see if anyone wants to duel if they do we'll come crashing down from the mountainside hopefully causing a huge amount of charge bonus damage fingers crossed uh, we will keep the archers on off fire at will and we will engage when the horses are in range switch them back to fire at will and we will see how much damage we can do with that 
Okay, so we have Sue's passive buff. Inspiring Surge, so decreased the cooldown of abilities just in general. Stifling Delfuge, Deluge, sorry, uh, plus inc five increased cooldown of abilities for enemies. See if we can duel Zhu Yuan. Similar strength, winner's effects, loser's effects. We need to get, we're going to need to get these effects. So we're going to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat with uh, Zhu Yun. I'm not sure how Sentinels work against Vanguards, but we will find out. Ooh, an unlucky start to our engagement. Cheng Pu did get dismounted. We will see what he can do against now, Zhu Yun, hopefully he can fight back. I've never seen a Sentinel verse, so this might end up being a mistake on my behalf, but we will find out soon enough. Hopefully we can win the day, since he is level 2 and he's versing a level 1 at Commander. Very close match already, we can see the balance of power isn't very drastically different. They're very similar in terms of combat ability. Maybe the Vanguard is a superior fighter in these situations. Who knows, we'll find out now. Vanguard is coming back and holding his own against Cheng Pu. As you can see, the infantry are moving around. I think they might be able to spot some of our units. Once they're in range, we will unleash a volley of arrows on them. Try to get rid of these horses as soon as possible. Okay, the engagement is very close, very neck and neck engagement. This is the sort of fight that you don't know if you're going to win or lose, um, but hopefully the outcome is favorable for us as this is a key engagement for our units. And this will be the decider really between who wins and who loses as it would give 100% buff to a lot of our stats. Oh, we're getting beaten back quite a bit here. We do need to secure the victory. We can't afford to lose. And it looks like we are slipping. Cheng Pu needs to really get some hits off. There we go. Got a couple of good hits. Hopefully that is the difference between winning and losing. Here we go. We are going to turn fire at will. And we are going to focus on the ranged horse units. Not the range horse units. We're going to focus our range on the horse units. Try to whittle them away as much as possible. That is going to be devastating for us if we can't get those early volleys off to kill this unit. And now here comes the attack. We're going to get our axe militia to zone them out. Our archers are going to focus on this other horse unit. Try to get rid of them as soon as possible. Here we go. The downward crash on the enemy horse unit. Hopefully these Axemen can do a lot of damage. Okay, these archers are breaking formation. We don't want that to happen at all. We just want them to stick to their formation and focus on the enemy archer units. Put them on guard mode and we will get the archers to focus on their archers as well while we're here. Horse, we'll get a... Infantry unit to crash down on the G Militia. Try to zone them out as quickly as possible. Hopefully we can get rid of these dudes as soon as possible. Again, Cheng Pu is fighting for his life here as this is a very, very close battle. Not sure if this will do anything, but it is an active buff that will stop ranged attacks. I don't think that will help him in his engagement. Hopefully Cheng Pu can pull through. We can only hope at this stage, ladies and gentlemen. We do need to win this engagement. It is a key engagement. We'll get Lu Su in on the action here. We do need him out, hopefully taking out these units. We will crash our Saber Militia into the flank or into the side of the G Militia. We just need to pile in and basically blob up on this unit. We're trying to get our Sword Infantry to put some pressure on their archers. Freeing up hopefully some of our archers in the process. If we can surround and crash in on these units, that would be ideal. This is a key battle, and same with Cheng Pu fighting for his life down here. At this rate, it is unsure who will win. The Vanguard is pulling ahead slightly. Uh, hopefully Cheng Pu can show him who, who is superior in combat. The Sentinel or the Vanguard. 
There we go. A good hit off there. Oh, and it is back and forth. It is a really close match. This is what this game is built for. These hand-to-hand -hand general combat fights. Hopefully I can pull through. I don't want to lose this right now as we are so close to the enemy's campments and so close to that armor craftsman. We do need to win this fight. The enemy are receiving reinforcements, I believe. I'm not sure where they are. Maybe they have... We need it. What cowards. Oh, we are so close. Hopefully we can deal the finishing blow here. I'll pop this off even though I'm not sure if it'll actually help. Fingers crossed it does. Oh, a couple of strikes here and there. Who's gonna win? Cheng Pu or Zhu Jun? Exhausted, confident. Oh, here we go. This will be the decider, ladies and gentlemen. This will be the decider. Okay, we're getting attacked from other archer units. I'm unsure as to where their location is. Oh, here they are. Cheng Pu emerged victorious, ladies and gentlemen. We actually won that fight. Oh my god, that was a very scary duel. We will have to retreat him now because he has lost a ton of health. We are going to decline that duel. We can't afford him to fight any more duels. We're going to have to retreat him back behind the enemy lines. We're going to reform our units, get all of our archers in position behind the main line and try to zone out this second force that is approaching. Hopefully we can kill off these horse units with our remaining archer units. Um, this is going to be a close fight here. We did take a lot of casualties. Oh, sorry, a lot of damage on Cheng Pu. We didn't face too many casualties in this major engagement here, um, but we did lose a couple of units uh, from the Axeman infantry, but that's okay. Um, they did their purpose. They pushed away those horses, and the archers did a fantastic job in whittling down their units. Hopefully that will be enough to sway the battle in our favor. We'll put our Sentinel Cheng Pu behind our main line, and we'll use the range of block chance to limit the amount of range ability if any returning archers do make it back. Here they are, they are regrouping. I think they will regroup with their unit and then push on to us for a final uh, strike against our forces. They're moving up into the forestry area scrub. We are probably gonna have to reposition as well. Alternatively, we could possibly zone out these remaining units. I think we might do that now. We won't let them regroup because that may um, prove to be a flaw on our behalf. We'll wipe out these G militia units as quickly as we possibly can. We'll get some Axe Band infantry to push up with them uh, just to provide some sort of cover in case a horse unit does charge down. We'll also move the remainder of our line up, try to cut off any sort of flanking force they may be trying to do put pressure on that main line of horse unit and force them into an engagement that favors us. Here we go, archers raining down on the G militias. Again, very squishy units since they don't have any armor. Very good at hand-to-hand -hand combat range, as long as they're not attacked from the side or the rear. These units will be whittled down very, very quickly under this hail of arrows. <laughs> Okay, so we do have our units pushing up and across. We will hold this unit back here. Try to absorb their arrow fire. We will launch our arrows into the enemy horse unit. They're very smart. They're using the cover of the bamboo trees as protection. Here we go. They are going to get charged from our from their horse units. We're going to push our units up and around the flank. We don't need to worry about that rear archer unit. We're going to try to surround and pinch in these horses. Here we go, horses will be whittled down immediately. We're gonna to try to surround them. We have a vanguard unit over here. We do need to move our generals up to supply some sort of buff. Our general is breaking. He is damage sustained and he's wavering in combat. We won't let that happen as we do need our units in this final key engagement. Try to pinch these guys down. Hopefully we can get A good amount of kills here. This is the final engagement, ladies and gentlemen. We do need to win this. 
We'll try to pin these guys down. Again, we need to pin these horses. We don't want to give them the mobility they need. They need to be held down, but they just keep cycling, charging, which is smart on the AI's behalf. However, we can't afford to let this happen. We just need to blob up on them and stop them from doing any more damage. If we can route the army, the general will route it as well. He isn't very strong. Uh, well, sorry, he is very strong, but he isn't strong enough to hold off an entire military force. We'll get Lufan in there and try to get him to engage, even though he's a strategist. Not very good at hand-to-hand, -hand, but at least he can provide some, court, some sort of um, buff to the defending military force. Okay, so we're going to wipe down... Um, what? Push on down and wipe out, sorry, <laughs> these Lancer Militia. Hopefully that... Um, will be the deciding battle over here. We do need to encircle them. Gym militia is gone. We're just going to focus all our attention on these horse units. We do need to defeat them. These guys just keep cycle charging in. Our units are exposed as they aren't well protected, but they are chopping down these horse units left, right, and center. Once these guys crumble, that'll be it. We're going to focus on this unit here, make them rout, and we're going to push onto this final horse unit here. Regroup a little bit, get a bit of a formation going. And then we're going to uh, charge in with our units here. Hopefully get off these charges and defeat this horse unit. They are the critical uh, key component to this victory for the enemy. We do need to zone in now on, these, on this general. Cheng Pu is going to pop his ability. We're going to get Lu Su in on the action, even though he is very weak. Cheng Pu is going to have to get in on the action as well. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We just won our victory against uh, odds that were against our favor. However, we did have a larger force. They did have cavalry. We used our axe infantry and our archers to whittle away at them first, uh, making it a lot easier for the rest of our units to push in and kill them. Again, it is very difficult to win a fight without spearmen, especially against a horse unit. Uh, but there we go, ladies and gentlemen, that is a easier win on our part. We're going to try to zone out this general. I'm not sure how much health he has left. Doesn't quite say. Shaken. He is very low health, though, because we can see in the HP bar here. Try to get rid of him as soon as possible. If we can get rid of him, that'll give us, one of our generals, a massive buff. We'll go fast forward time here for now. Try to see if that will work and get rid of him. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, the general has fallen, and we will claim the victory on that in the battle, and we can push on to take out the Armour Craftsman Settlement. Sorry, to reconquer the Armour Craftsman Settlement. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Well, that was a very well-fought victory. We did struggle, but we did end up winning. Uh, we didn't lose a lot of units. We did take a lot of damage to our generals, though. That is fine. We're going to have to push on to the craftsman settlement and demand a surrender. We really don't want to afford uh, any more setbacks in our conquest of the south, because we do need these lands to fund our campaign in the north. We will keep the seal, Yuan Shu. We cannot give you that seal, as it's the whole reason why we're at war. We do want to hold on to that ancillary, unfortunately. Now we can give him an upgrade. We do have this interesting skill tree here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sure if you guys have seen it before or not, but for each of your commanders, you can upgrade their skill tree, and that will give them extra buffs and bonuses to their uh, commanding armies and to themselves as well. So as we can see here, Chang Pu, we do have three options to upgrade. We can upgrade Precision, which will give us a plus eight exper expertise, plus 10% ranged armor piercing damage for his own army, and plus 10 plus 10% uh, range firing rate when commanding. That'll be a very useful one for us. We might end up getting that one, but let's have a look at the others. We have a patience upgrade, giving us plus eight resolve, 25% chance of capturing enemy officers post battle, increased rate of wall and settlement damage during sieges. That'll be very good for us if we are taking a wall settlement, uh, as patience will um, boost that uh, rate in which we conquer a settlement. And our diligence as well, plus eight expertise, plus 5% melee evasion for melee infantry. That'll be very good. And a plus 25% bonus experience for units per season. Now, the precision diligence will probably be the one we might get. Uh, I think we will get the precision though at this time, because we will need those archers as they are a key component of our faction. 
or if I build, uh, we will try to get, yeah, we'll get precision up. That'll help us a lot in the future. We can, obviously, every general has a different uh, set of weapons they are allowed to obtain, depending on their class type. Um, as we can see here, we can equip uh, twin axes, axes, twin maces, twin swords, or swords. Um, we do have a sword attached, a Jian sword attached to him, uh, which gives us 441 melee base damage, 327 melee damage, 330 melee attack rate, which is maximum, or which isn't maximum, which is one of the maximum rates. Um, we have get an axe, which gives us 144 base, 337 damage. We won't get that, that's weak. Uh, dual GN, which gives us an output of pretty much almost double. Uh, 300, 508 melee damage, armor piercing, but less attack rate. This would be better for dueling. I think we might get the dual GN or the ceremonial sword, which will give us a bit more melee damage base, but less armor piercing, a higher attack rate as well. So we might end up getting the GN. Uh, that will give us a little bit more, and that's pushed our... I think Chengpu was already a legendary character, I'm pretty sure. I think that brought it down. Yeah, it did. It brought it down, but that's okay. We get an extra bonus to our hand-to-hand um, -hand engagement engagements, so we'll keep that on him there. We'll give him the Builder as well. This will give us a little bit more buffs to Chengpu, as we will use him as one of our main commanders in the retinue. And we'll give him a Feather Fan. This might actually give us a little bit more... Um, satisfaction as well. Okay, fantastic. So that's Cheng Pu. Over here we have Lu Fan. He doesn't need an upgrade just as of yet, but we will give him a uh, nine chapters of mathematical art. This will give him more cunning, more satisfaction, and more reserves, which will help him in assisting Cheng Pu in the conquest of the south while Sun Jian fights in the north. Okay, we will leave him with the ceremonial sword. That will help him as well, just fight off any other general who tries to zone him out. But that being said though, we will push on to Changsha Armor Craftsman. That will be our next um, engagement. We will demand surrender. They won't surrender, so we can win by Pyrrhic victory. Unsure of the results of that. However, we will starve them out for now. If they do try to push on us, we can always uh, engage in an open field battle. We don't want to fight on the settlement itself, as they will have uh, buffs defending in the settlement itself okay we will upgrade our coastal training port and if we can in a large town we can't upgrade anything that's okay we'll get sun Jian back into the large town and we will try to see if we can conquer jangling livestock farm so as I said before guys, we're going to be pushing Sun Jian on to take out Zhang Ling and Zhang Sha. We're going to try to conquer those settlements before Liu Bia has a chance to attack us. Hopefully he goes to war with Yuan Shu, which I believe he already is at war with. Uh, we've already signed a non-aggression pact, so we don't have to worry about him. We won't have to worry about Liu Bia attacking us, we'll just have to worry about his two vassals here. And that'll give us a bit of security in the north and a bit more defensibility against a northern army trying to conquer the Southlands. Okay, with that being said, we do have an engagement over here, like I said before. We'll worry about that next turn, but we will end the turn on that. Uh, what turn are we at now? We are at turn 8, so two more turns, and we will end the episode on that. Um, but yeah, we are looking good, guys. We are looking good despite everything. We do have a period of victory. Um, matchup of units, generals, as well as Rotarian factors to generate the outcome. This means that superior numbers do not always guarantee victory. Okay, fantastic. So they are... Um, not fantastic, this is really bad for us, but they are going out to sally forth and fight us. We will start the battle. Uh, again, sorry guys, if we go ahead <laughs> repeat of the same last battle, but we're going to have to fight this battle if we want to secure the win down here in the south. We will take the armor craftsmen and we'll move from there. Cheng Pu has proven to be a superior general and has shown that he can take on a vanguard even though despite vanguards do have an advantage over sentinels according to this. From our last game we did see that they, from our last battle we did see that Cheng Pu was struggling but he did end up coming on top. We will keep him more of a support role now and just attack generals without actually engaging in a duel. We'll also set him to uh, do not accept duels as we do not want him to attack or be attacked by any enemies here. We are on the defensive, so I'm saying, suggesting we might go into the open field. However, they do have horses. Open fields are good for horses, um, but we will probably just zone them in again with our infantry units. That is completely fine. Um, we can also just encircle them as we do have a superiority in numbers. 
Uh, we will set back out here and go from there. Again, open fields are good for horses, but they're also good for archers, so we may be able to zone out the horses with our archer units, um, and that will prove a very effective strategy, I believe, as we do have archer superiority, and we will be able to hold on to our um, superiority in numbers as this engagement unfolds. But uh, that being said, guys, let's get straight into it and hope for the best. <laughs> So they do have a couple horse units coming back into the fray. They aren't very strong as we can see here. They are very, very limited in numbers. Hopefully that means we can whittle them down in a couple of volleys and focus our attention on the reinforcing infantry military units. They do have an infantry captain unit coming out to sally forth from the garrison. Hopefully we can take them out. They do have a little bit more armor, but that's okay. We do have the numerical superiority. I mean, we'll be able to surround them and whittle down their morale. Okay, well, let's fast forward a bit here. Hopefully they can sally forth and take on us as soon as possible. Uh, that will be advantageous for us as they have decided to come forth and battle us. If, this, if their army mobilizes against us, we have a sure chance of victory. They will be tired or, um, or exhausted. Or not exhausted, but they will be tiring out on the march to us. We just have to stand still and wait for them to attack. Hopefully it doesn't take too long as we are waiting for them to push up. As we can see here, we have a little bit of glimpse before they head into the woods of their army. They do have an infantry captain sword unit. I wasn't expecting a sword unit, I was expecting spears, but that's okay. These guys will be a little bit harder to beat. Uh, but we will hopefully get a flank on them and try to take them out before they get too many kills off us. They do have another full stack of infantry units, the save militia, again, not too concerned about that as we do have numerical superiority, but they do have a couple of full stack, or a full stack unit of horses, which is what I think we'll focus on, at least for the start of this battle. We will set our archers to non-skirmish mode and toggle guard mode so they, do break for, so they don't break formation. Hopefully that will make sure they stay where they are, and we will move our infantry into a more favorable position hopefully we might actually just push these guys a little bit further up than usual and spread their lines out as far as possible give us a bit more coverage and making them focus on a stronger line our axeman we might just bring out to the side here we'll give them a bit more of an angle to work with as we can use them for a flanking force and also just cover our left flank a little bit more Cheng Pu will wait here in the center. We don't want him to be engaged in the enemy for too long. And Lu Su will also get you... Oh, sorry, Lu Fan will also get you right here next to Cheng Pu. Give that uh, extra debuff on the front line. Extra buff on the front line. Cheng Pu will move you more towards the center here as that will give us a little bit more um, range block chance as you are going to be useful in protecting our units from Archer Fire. We can move our archers up a little bit, I think. We'll move one here, just to get a bit more of a spread of units. One here. And we will start focusing fire on this horse unit. We will try to... We are in engagement, so we will turn off full speed, and we'll get our archers to focus in on here. We will move our infantry units up the front line, try to get in an early engagement, and we'll also move our archers up to try to tune out these other units. These horses are at this flank. We can focus fire on them. Bring our other archers units around. Again, our main uh, our main focus will be on these uh, horse units on the flanks, um, as they will prove to be a little bit more of a threat in the future. Again, we're going to push through. These Sabre Militia units are tearing us to pieces. We're going to have to focus our archers on the enemy horse unit. Try to pin them down and we get some volleys in. Keep Cheng Pu close by. We don't want him to get engaged in combat. Alright, good. The front line is occupied. The other enemy units are rounding. We can get the axe infantry to pull around the side. Hopefully provide a buff. We 
We will get Cheng Pu to engage in this combat. We will dismount him as he's not very good against spear units on horseback and we'll get him to fight on the ground. Provide some sort of protection for his units on the ground. Our archers are starting to whittle down these horse units. Hopefully that wipes out this unit completely. They're pretty much broken. They're basically combat effective, ineffective at this point. Move our units around. We could probably zone in on the general. I don't think I will though. I'll keep one unit on him. The vanguards are very, very strong. We will push our units out. We don't want our units to get caught up in our archer fire. And our archers are missing all their shots. Maybe we won't focus fire on them. We will just get our archers to focus on this blob here. Try to focus on the Jan infantry captain. As they will be a massive threat to us in the late, later section of this battle. And we'll try to flank and try to get some rear charges on these Saber Militia units. There we go. A rain of arrows coming in. That will give us a huge buff. Axe band into the rear. Gen infantry captain is taking quite a bit of damage. This arch militia unit is just coming in out of nowhere. We're going to engage these guys, clear them out, and then we'll get a rear charge into the rear of the Jian captain. Jian captain is crumbling and fleeing. Move our Cheng Pu into the fray, get him to get some hits off. Inspire the units a little bit more. And we'll get our final rear charge with the axe band. Clear this up so we can focus on here. Alright, fantastic. We've won this battle, I believe. This is completely in our favor. Get Lu Zhu in, or what is his name? Lu Fan, rather, to get in on this combat a little bit. Might pull him out a little bit, actually. Strategists aren't very good at hand to hand fighting. And here we go, we've, we've routed this enemy, and we can flank into this rear of this enemy here. There we go, get a rear charge off, get Cheng Pu in on the combat. He's whittling down a little bit of his health, though, unfortunately. We're going to need to support this area over here. Focus in on here. Archers are superior in every way, and I think we've won this battle, ladies and gentlemen. We just need to clear out these these remaining uh, forces, these remaining generals. Li Khan needs to be eliminated as he is a major threat. We will try to mount up Cheng Pu to get him out of the fray as he is taking a lot of damage. Shoot the remaining retreating infantry and focus in on the final commanders. Hopefully they break soon and route. I think they're going to try to gun for Lufan. No, they're just going to cause a bit more damage before they retreat. That's completely fine. Um, we will just probably zone them out. Hopefully make them rout as they will waver. Lufan still in on the action. Still trying to fight this dude. I don't think I made command, but... As we can see, the Vanguard generals are doing quite a bit of damage to us. And we're just going to whittle down as much of these saber militias as possible. We don't want to fight them in the settlement again. Get rid of them as quickly as possible. There we go. Cheng Pu still hasn't found his horse. His horse is probably gone. But we're going to try to zone out this particular commander. The other one's retreated. If we can just wedge this guy in and force him to um, retreat or even just force him to die, that'd be good for us in the final take of the settlement. Fingers crossed. Yeah, Cheng Pu's doing a bit of damage to him on that horse. Hopefully that is enough to kill him. And he's going to make a break, but we don't want to let him escape. we got to finish him off before he escapes, and hopefully that will turn the tide of the battle and finish the game off for us here. We will get our archers to focus on this other Vanguard General. There we go, and that is a victory for us. We defeated their General, and we have claimed the decisive battle to take on the settlement.
And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We just defeated the final remnants of that Han army, and we will take the armor craftsmen. That will give us a huge economic boof bust. Oh, buh, buff, excuse me. A <laughs> boof bust. <laughs> a huge economic buff to our forces. We will use that last battle to replenish our units. That's what we're going to need right now in terms of priority. And again, this next turn, we will use it to push on to Jangling and try to conquer the armor craftsman area now. So now that most of the army is completely gone, we can just delegate the battle and conquer the settlement. There we go, we lost three units, I lost 58. Easy win, we're going to occupy that and take the armor craftsman. Hopefully that will give us a nice buff once we've fixed it. And then we will recover a little bit. We will wait well, seven turns it'll take. It's a bit too long for me. We will wait a little bit and then we will push on to the Changsha Tea House. Uh, and then once that's done, we will rest to recuperate and move on to Toolmaker and then so on and so forth. Okay, it's going to cost too much to recruit that general. We are going to have to start making moves on this end. We do want to get our hands down on the northern sector as quickly as possible. They do have a bigger force, I believe. A couple of units here and there, a couple of units there. We do, we will have the superiority in units specialized and unit, um, unit type. We will probably just disband one of these retinues or a couple of these units. Uh, we do just want to um, save as much money as possible. So we'll get rid of our weaker units. These guys are level 2, level 1. These guys aren't very strong. Our same militia are a bit more stronger in terms of veterancy. So merely comparison. Oh wait, the Jax is better, is it? Okay. Interesting. Well, we might just end up holding onto them until we take Tea House. So then we'll disband the entire army here. And then just focus on building up here in Jangling. Okay. Well, if we're going to do that anyway, we might as well just get a unit ready. We'll get Lady Wu in on the fray. We'll try to get her retinue going. And we'll get some horse units, and that'll tip the balance in our favor in the upcoming engagements. We have a four more turns to replenishment, but that's okay. We just needed another retinue of um, uh, units there to support us in the conquest of those neighboring factions. Okay, with that being said though, we will upgrade our technology tree. I'm not sure what we're going to get. We might end up getting something that will buff our commercial income income from industry or 15 percent income from peasantry we might go down the uh ooh. we might go down we might get the registry for land because we do need that income from the peasantry class to support us okay fantastic and that brings us to turn nine i believe or turn 10 i can't quite remember let's have a look at the turn timer now Okay, so we are on turn timer 10. This will be the final turn before our next game. So we will end the video on this note. Uh, for now, we can see that we have reached the second, uh, the rank of second marquee, which is what we wanted to achieve. Thankfully, that it will uh, benefit us in the future as that will uh, give us a bit more legitimacy on our road to becoming the uh, uniter of China. That being said, guys, thank you guys so much for watching today's episode. If you guys do like the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys did dislike it, let me know. Um, that will help me uh, know what sort of videos to make in the future. But apart from that, again, if you guys want more content on Three Kingdoms or any other games that I do play, you can head over to my Twitch account at twitch.tv forward slash mega underscore sasuke888. That being said, guys, thank you again so much for that. And that is everything for now. And hopefully in the future, we can secure China with Sun Jian. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. This is me, Mega Sasuke, and I'll see you guys next time.